So in this lecture, we will be dealing with the tumors of the lung and pleura. So lung cancer is a major cancer in the world and it causes um, high mortality and morbidity. And it is definitely associated with uh, cigarette smoking. And if you look at uh, the scenario in India, the crude incidence of lung cancer in India is around uh, 6 per 1 lakh population. And lung cancer ranks the fourth in uh, overall cancer incidences. And in males, it ranked the second most common cancer. And in females, it is the sixth most common cancer in our country. If you look at this board diagram, there is a steep raise in lung cancers from 2004 to 2014. Then there was a, a drop and probably this is due to the changing smoking habits in our country. So lung cancer incidences parallels with uh, the tobacco smoking and smoking remains the single most important risk factor for the development of lung cancer. But uh, a small portion that is 10 to 20 percent are attributed to occupational exposure to various carcinogenic agents. This slide represents the incidence and mortality rates of lung cancer in both sexes. After 1990, there is a decreasing trend of uh, the lung cancer in men. It is due to decreased rates of smoking. Whereas in women, decrease in smoking patterns lags behind men and uh, they, there is an upward trend in the incidence of um, lung cancers in women. So tobacco is uh, related in most of the cancers. 80% of lung cancers occur in India. Uh, they occur in active smokers or those who stopped recently. And there is a very good correlation between the, the quantity of cigarettes smoked and the frequency of lung cancer. And in heavy smokers who are defined as two packets per day for the at least for the past uh, 20 years uh, has uh, at least 60 times greater chances of developing lung cancer. So although cessation of smoking decreases the risk of lung cancer over time but uh, it will never come down to baseline level. And second hand smoking or passive smoking is associated with uh, twice the uh, increased risk of developing lung cancer when compared to general population. There are numer carcin uh, numerous carcinogens in uh, cigarette smoke. Around uh, 3000 carcinogens have been identified but among them polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons ranks the top in causing lung cancer. And 25% of lung cancers worldwide occur in non-smokers. So although duration intensity of smoking well correlated with uh, cancer risk not all persons exposed to tobacco smoke develop lung cancer. So if you look at uh, the heavy smokers, only 11% will land in lung cancer. If this doesn't mean that one should uh, not stop smoking. So this may be due to the variations in uh, P450 monooxygenase system or it may be due to the uh, DNA repair mechanism variations in the population. So this is uh, Richard Dahl the epidemiologist who associated or who linked smoking with lung cancer. So there are industrial hazards like exposure to asbestos, arsenic, chromium, uranium, nickel, vinyl chloride, mustard gas and also high dose of uh, ionizing radiation may be an etiological agent in some of the lung cancers. So air pollution as such is not a carcinogenic uh, factor. But uh, those who smoke, it may be an added risk for the development of lung cancer. So mechanism of air pollution producing cancer is that uh, it induces chronic inflammation in the lung. And any chronic inflammation is associated with the destruction, construction and with uh, lots of uh, growth factors. And probably these growth factors constant uh, presence may initiate mutagenic properties in the lung. And radon gas naturally occurring and uh, in some of the soils the radon gas levels are high and probably this may produce lung cancer in some of the regions of the world. So coming to molecular genetics of uh, lung cancers, squamous cell carcinomas show loss involving uh, chromosome 3, 9 and uh, the loss involving chromosome 17 and amplification of uh, fibroblast growth factor receptor 1 
and with respect to that uh, chromosome 9 uh, small arm loss it involves uh, CDKN2A gene with whose product is P16 and if you recollect the cell cycle P16 is a cell cycle inhibitor because of this mutation uh, such um, clutch or break is lost and the cell goes on dividing and it, this type of um, loss is seen in 65% of uh, squamous cell carcinomas. So small cell carcinomas 100% show RB gene mutation and a greater percent that is 70 to 90 percent of the tumors show p53 mutation and uh, there is some of the tumors show 3 uh, 3p deletion and uh, the amplification of mike family adenocarcinoma there is a gain in function involving egfr all cross met and uh, ret mutations and uh, mutations involving keras also a factor that is seen in adenocarcinomas 25% of lung cancers worldwide occur in non-smokers and uh, these cancers occur more commonly in women and they are most of them are adenocarcinomas. Cancers in non-smokers more likely to have EGFR mutation and almost never they have KROS mutation. And uh, P53 mutation occur less frequently when compared to uh, small cell carcinomas. There are some precursor lesions which predispose for the development of lung cancer. Uh, if you look at uh, the squamous cell carcinoma, squamous dysplasia, carcinoma in C2, and for adenocarcinomas, atypical adenomatous hyperplasia and adenocarcinomas forms the precursor lesion. And for uh, neuroendocrine tumors like uh, small cell carcinoma, carcinoid, probably diffuse idiopathic pulmonary neuroendocrine cell hyperplasia may be a precursor lesion in the lung. Well established a sequence of events for the squamous cell carcinomas to occur like uh, basal cell hyperplasia, then it will result in metaplasia, dysplasia and ultimately carcinoma in C2 which uh, later may invade and cause uh, invasive squamous cell carcinomas. Such a sequence of events are also well established in, in the case of uh, squamous cell carcinomas of the oral cavity and cervical squamous cell carcinomas. So this slide represents the um, sequence of events that can predispose for the development of squamous cell carcinomas of the lung. So A represents the goblet cell hyperplasia and B represents the basal cell hyperplasia and C represents the squamous metaplasia, D the uh, dysplasia, severe dysplasia and E represents carcinoma in situ. Look at the basement membrane is intact and F represents invasive squamous cell carcinoma. So coming to classification of uh, lung carcinomas, this slide uh, represents the classification and uh, <coughs> important thing as a UG you should remember is the topmost four lung cancers that is adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, small cell carcinoma and large cell carcinoma. Among them adenocarcinoma is the frequent uh, carcinoma that we encounter in our practice. So coming to individual cancers of the lung, so adenocarcinoma. It is a malignant epithelial tumor which shows glandular differentiation or may produce mucin. There are many varieties of growth patterns but uh, you should uh, remember asinar and lipidic pattern. So asinar pattern refers to the gland formation as uh, it is shown in this histological image. You can see that uh, glands are lined by columnar type of epithelium which uh, shows stratification and say, some necrotic debris within the lumen. And look at the nucleus, they are pleomorphic. And grossly, they, they are uh, small tumors located at the periphery of the lung. So they are nearer to pleura. You see that gray white area located at the base of the lung. So it, they are nearer to the pleura. And uh, IHC wise, immunohistochemistry, may, um, they are positive for TTF1 and napsin A. So this is another uh, type of adenocarcinoma which show lipidic growth pattern. So meaning the cells grow along the surface of the alveoli without loss of alveolar architecture. Look at the histology, the alveolar septa in the lower half of the image are thickened and they are lined by tall columnar type of epithelium with uh, nuclear abnormalities. And the upper half of this uh, same histological image, you can see the normal lung and can it can be compared. Such interstitial uh, mnemonic type of um, appearance of this uh, tumor 
may show shadows in the radiologically which may be mistaken for interstitial pneumonia here you can see in this uh, ct image uh, the there is a pneumonic patch in the lower half of the um, left lung clinical importance of this knowledge is that uh, a, a older person who is having the pulmonary symptoms and uh, radiologically a lesion in the lung which mimics uh, pneumonia but he is not responding to the antibiotics so in such scenarios think of the possibility of adenocarcinoma with a lepidic pattern so another important feature of uh, adenocarcinoma is its association with the scar so they tend to arise in old scars like uh, infarct and metallic foreign bodies resulting in scar formation or wounds of the lung uh, which healed by fibrosis and granulomatous inflammation especially tuberculosis which heals by fibrosis so it is a it is an example for scar cancers can you name some other uh, scar cancers so marjolin ulcer which is nothing but squamous cell carcinoma arising in old skin scar especially the burn scars is another example for the scar cancers the second uh, carcinoma is squamous cell carcinoma it is a malignant epithelial tumors arising from the squamous uh, cells which are usually a, a metaplastic uh, squamous cells which underwent uh, dysplastic changes and well differentiated squamous cell carcinomas which pro will produce the keratin pearls as you see in the case of uh, this histological image keratin pearls and they are centrally located that means they are uh, towards the hilum and usually they are centered around uh, the major bronchi and they are associated with uh, the uh, necrosis so they produce cavitated lesion which may be mistaken for uh, tuberculosis lung abscess or other uh, fungal infections older person with a cavitated lesion uh, probably uh, you should have in your differential squamous cell carcinoma so because of their uh, location they may cause obstruction to the bronchial passages and it may bring the patient with atelectasis or they may be suffering from bronchopneumonia or lipid pneumonia and uh, immunohistochemistry they give positive reaction for p16 and p40 and uh, another important point you should remember regarding squamous cell carcinoma of the lung is that they rarely metastasize outside the thorax so if at all they metastasize outside the thorax it is a late event and same rule applies uh, to the head and neck uh, uh, squamous cell carcinoma so oral cavity or tongue they rarely go outside the head and neck region for metastasis so small cell carcinoma is another uh, uh, lung cancer it is uh, the very highly malignant tumor and by the time uh, we diagnose these tumors they metastasize widely and 100% are associated with uh, smoking and they are also like squamous cell carcinomas centrally located and they exhibit typical peribronchial spread so you can see that uh, uh, lumen of the bronchi around which this gray white uh, tumor is located so they are spreading along the peribronchial uh, region and uh, they are um, they are microscopically they are composed of small blue cells resembling lymphocytes but their size is three times that of mature lymphocyte they will have scant uh, cytoplasm but uh, typical nuclear features like uh, nuclear chromatin described in these tumors as salt and pepper that means you see a uh, pale nucleus with the dark staining dot like chromatin spread over the uh, nuclear area another important feature of uh, small cell carcinoma is the nuclear molding so the uh, the nuclei tend to uh, fit into each other and uh, so the nuclear molding is another feature uh, that can be appreciated histologically immunohistochemistry they are positive for chromogranin synaptophysin cd57 bcl2 and they may secrete varieties of hormones and thereby produce paraneoplastic syndromes so this is the most common uh, type of cancer which is associated with paraneoplastic syndromes that is uh, they may elaborate uh, acth and uh, the patient may come to you initially uh, with cushingoid features and they may secrete adh with uh, fluid retention and the patient may present with edema initially 
So this is the gross and histological appearance of small cell carcinoma. You can see that um, uh, the cut surface of the lung with my gray white tumor widely metastasizing within the lung. So this is another feature of small cell carcinoma. Histologically, they are composed of small blue cells and with lots of necrosis. There are two lung cancers which are uh, known for paraneoplastic manifestations. Among them, the small cell carcinoma and uh, another one is squamous cell carcinoma. The incidence of this paraneoplastic syndromes is 1 to 10% uh, and they produce varieties of hormones depending upon the uh, type of hormone, clinical, man clinical presentation may vary. Say for example, small cell carcinomas are known to pro uh, be associated with ACTH and ADH protect, uh, production and uh, so the hyponatremia and Cushingoid uh, features may be the clinical manifestation respectively. And then uh, these uh, squamous cell carcinomas are known to produce parathormone uh, related peptide or prostaglandins which may cause hypercalcemia in these persons. So other hormones and related uh, clinical manifestations are given in this uh, slide. And easy way to remember this uh, paraneoplastic syndrome association with uh, the um, small cell carcinoma is that uh, small cell carcinomas can elaborate any of the hormones produced by the pituitary. Large cell carcinoma is a diagnosis of exclusion. That means you should exclude um, by even by, by molecular uh, pathology the possibilities of uh, the usual adenocarcinomas or uh, squam cell carcinomas or small cell carcinomas. Then if it is not fitting into any of this category, then you will call this as large cell carcinoma. So usually the older uh, uh, persons uh, suffer from this tumor and by the, uh, by the time they present they are bulky measuring more than 5 centimeters in uh, diameter. Uh, they are centered around uh, bigger air passages so the obstructive manifestations may be initial presentation and they frequently produce hemorrhages and necrosis. Histologically in addition to uh, the pleomorphism uh, they are associated with necrosis and hemorrhages and they frequently involve thoracic cage. So this uh, the gist of uh, histology of um, lung cancer. You can see A representing uh, gland formation. So it is, it is adenocarcinoma and inset shows the TTF1 positivity. And B represents the squamous pearl formation which is typically seen in squamous cell carcinoma. And C represents the small blue cells with lots of necrosis which is on the upper left corner of this uh, slide. And then uh, another feature is that you see the blood vessel showing a bluish um, uh, coloration of its wall. So this um, bluish coloration of this wall is due to the necrosed tumor liberates DNA and as for some unknown reason uh, DNA gets deposited in the wall of the blood vessels. It is known as azopody phenomena. And lastly, the D represents pleomorphic cells with uh, large uh, um, nucleus with uh, prominent nucleolus and giant cell formation and lots of mitotic activity. So this is large cell carcinoma. And sputum examination may sometimes give the clue regarding the underlying pathology. And pickup rate of um, carcinoma of the lung by sputum examination is very, very low. So, but if it shows like these cells of squamous cell carcinoma, then it is the cheapest uh, test that is available to diagnose uh, lung cancer. And uh, coming, to, coming to clinical features of lung carcinoma, usually the patient will be in the 6th and 7th decades of life and they will be suffering from uh, symptoms for several months before they present to the clinic. And uh, the clinical symptomatology depends upon the location of the tumor and size of the tumor. So centrally located tumors present early with cough. Uh, they may also suffer from dyspnea, wheezing, hemoptysis and pneumonia. And larger tumors may produce um, the pleuritic chest pain and superior vena caval syndrome because of the obstruction to um, or uh, invasion of the mediastinum. And peripherally located tumors are asymptomatic for a longer period. Unless they become big, the patient will not present with uh, the localizing symptoms. So this table gives um, different uh, clinical features and their pathological basis. Uh, re remember, cough is the most common presentation and it is due to involvement of central airways. And uh, this lung cancer may mimic sometimes in the presentation of other cancers. Like uh, the patient may come to you with the hoarseness of voice, mimicking laryngeal cancers. 
but it is due to the recurrent laryngeal nerve involvement of the um, central or uh, apical cancers. They may mimic esophageal cancer by bringing the patient with dysphagia because of uh, invasion of the esophagus. Word about uh, Pankow's tumor, it is nothing but a lung cancer situated in the apex of the lung. So because of this location, it involves the brachial flexes, it involves the sympathetic chain producing typical clinical features. The patient will have very severe pain, especially along the distribution of ulnar nerve. And uh, yeah, because of sympathetic involvement, the patient also will have the signs of uh, Horner syndrome. That means anophthalmos, ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis in the um, same site. So lung cancer spreads to different uh, organs in the body. Among them, adrenals, liver, brain, and bone are the commonest site. Earlier, the most common cause for uh, Addison's disease was tuberculosis. Now, with the increasing incidence of lung cancer, it forms the most common cause for Addison's disease. So if you look at the prognosis in lung cancer, it is very, very poor. Five-year survival is meager uh, 16%. In general, adenocarcinomas, squamous cell carcinoma tend to remain localized for a longer period of time and may have little better prognosis. And if a tumor shows Keras mutation, it uh, spells a worse prognosis. And small cell carcinomas are sensitive to radiation and chemo, chemotherapy. And uh, in a limited case, if it is a, a small tumor, probably cure rate is around 15 to 25 percent. Earlier, we used to uh, divide lung cancers into small cell carcinomas and non-small cell carcinomas broadly. And uh, this is due to the um, therapeutic modalities. If the patient has a small cell carcinoma, the mainstay of therapy is, is uh, chemotherapy and radiation. If it is non-small cell carcinoma, mainstay of therapy is surgery. So nowadays, we have uh, targeted therapy which target especially the tyrosine kinase receptors, which got mutated in lung cancers. Among them, most notable, which is commonly seen in non-smokers, especially adenocarcinomas, is EGFR mutation. And a combination of chemotherapy along with tyrosine kinase inhibitors is also available for these patients. Coming to carcinoid tumor, other uh, tumor of the lung, uh, it is a low-grade malignant epithelial neoplasm occurring in a younger age that is less than 40 years. Uh, 20 to 40 percent of the patients are non-smokers. Grossly, they show a typical appearance that which is described as collar button lesion. That means a bulk of the tumor is within the lung and they tend to protrude through the a bronchial wall into the lumen, bronchial lumen, so producing a collar button shaped lesion. So this is a typical appearance. So if you are doing bronchoscopy, it may be seen protruding into the bronchial lumen. Microscopically, the cells produce nests and they have typical salt and pepper chromatin. So you can see that uh, white background with um, the dark uh, pepper. If you look at this nuclei, they are paler and uh, this uh, with the dark dots. And this is the typical appearance which is described as salt and pepper chromatin which is characteristic feature of neuroendocrine neoplasms. If you recollect a small cell carcinoma, they also exhibit this salt and pepper chromatin. And um, because of their uh, tendency to um, invade and uh, protrude into the larger bronchial passages, they may bring the patient with atelectasis, chronic pneumonia, or bronchiectasis. So, carcinoid syndrome present in 10% uh, of the tumors and the patient may come with uh, flushing, hypertension and also anxiety attacks. So, gross appearance of carcinoid, as I was telling, bulk of the tumor is uh, located within the lung uh, tissue and a small portion protrudes into the bronchial passages. So, this may cause obstruction to the air passages. So, histologically, the cells are arranged in nests and uh, they have this uh, powdery salt and pepper chromatin. And uh, don't forget that collar button appearance of this lesion. So another uh, malignant tumor is malignant mesothelioma, which is a plural tumor. So malignant mesotheliomas are most commonly associated with uh, asbestos exposure. And uh, the person's lifetime risk for uh, malignant mesothelioma is 7 to 10 percent when they are exposed to asbestos. There is a long latent period 
of uh, decades, 25 to 45 years before the patient develops uh, malignant mesothelioma. So, tumor suppressor gene mutations involving CDKN2A is seen in 80% of the cases. So morphology, they may arise in parietal or visceral pleura. They spread along the pleural surface of the lung with uh, extensive pleural effusion. Affected uh, lung becomes ensheathed or encased by this tumor because of this pleural spread. And microscopically, they exhibit epithelioid or sarcomatoid or mixed patterns. IHC, very importantly, they are positive for cholretinin call, call and WT1 and uh, D240. Because of this um, involvement of the pleura, the presenting complaint may be chest pain. Patient may have dyspnea. And uh, important clinical uh, point you should not forget with respect to mesothelioma is recurrent pleural effusions and especially the rapidly reaccumulating pleural effusions. So if you drain a pleural fluid within no time, same quantity accumulates in the thoracic cage. So this is a typical. So when you see this uh, rapidly reaccumulating pleural effusion, you should think of the possibility of mesothelioma. And here the cut surface of the lung, black area at the center uh, shows the lung proper with some tumor nodules. But majority of the uh, tumor is located on the pleural surface. So the gray white uh, 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 area represents the tumor. And histologically, uh, epithelial cells forming glands and uh, immunohistochemistry wise, they are positive for call retinin. And uh, there are varieties of tumors. They can metastasize into the lung and they mimic primary cancers. So when you see multiple nodules in lung fields, you should think of the possibility of metastasis, most commonly from colon, breast, and uh, varieties of sarcoma metastasize, metastasize to lung. And uh, in um, children, you should think of the possibility of Wilms and neuroblastoma. And if you look at this x-ray, there are multiple big, big nodules involving almost entire lung fields. Because of their resemblance to cannonball, they are known as cannonball lesions. And uh, any tumor, any lung uh, mets can have this con cannonball appearance, but uh, mostly the cannonballs are produced by um, renal cell carcinoma and choriocarcinoma mets in the lung. A word about uh, coin lesion, look at this x-ray x-ray showing a well-defined radio opaque shadow in the lung field. So this is uh, described as coin lesion, especially when the patient is asymptomatic. So there are four rules. If you follow these rules, probably you may cleave the uh, differential diagnosis and arrive at possible etiology or possible diagnosis. So rule number one, if you have world x-rays and if you compare, if the size of the lesion is not changing, probably you are dealing with a benign lesion. And rule number two, if the lesion is rapidly Im uh, increasing in size, it is unlikely to be neoplastic. So it may be uh, having infection or inflammation in the background. Rule number three, in a smoker, if you see a coin lesion, it is uh, taken, for, uh, taken as uh, malignancy unless proven otherwise. Rule number four, if you see calcification within the lesion, possibly it suggests a benign nature of the lesion. And um, it is worth remembering calcification in the lung fields spells benign nature. Calcification in breast lesions or breast fields spells malignancy. This calcification refers to the fine calcification, not big, big chunks of calcification. And same thing applies, fine calcification in the uh, thyroid probably again suggests the possibility of malignancy. So summarizing, smoking is um, associated with lung cancer and adenocarcinoma is the most common lung cancer you encounter. And small cell carcinomas are highly malignant, known to uh, present with paraneoplastic syndromes. And uh, mesotheliomas are associated with asbestos exposure. And uh, suspect mesothelioma when you encounter a patient with uh, rapidly reaccumulating pleural effusion. And uh, adenocarcinomas with uh, lipidic spread may mimic radiologically pneumonias. So any patient with a diagnosis of pneumonia not responding to therapy, think of the possibility of adenocarcinoma. And uh, KRAS mutations associated with very bad prognosis, EGFR mutations, we have targeted therapy. And uh, large cell lung carcinoma is a diagnosis of exclusion. Coin lesions in a smoker 
is considered as lung cancer unless proven otherwise. Cannonball lesions suggest the possibility of metastasis and most notably the renal cell carcinoma and choriocarcinoma. The references for most of the pathology lectures are pathology textbooks, mainly including Robbins and Cotran, Pathologic Basis of Disease and images from online sources. Thanks for watching. Click subscribe and click like if you like the video.